Yo, how are y'all doing? Um, I'm working on my workshop site today. Um, I might do, I might not be able to stream tomorrow as well. I just realized I've got a flu jab. Um, so off uh, my, my American friends flu shot. Um, but yeah, the, I might have to do it early tomorrow. Um, but we'll see. Anyway, so today, um, uh, I'm going to be working on this because um, I'm running a little bit behind my own sketch at the moment. So I'm just going to keep working on this. Oh, do you want to be released? Sorry, I've got a car. Come on, off you pop. That's it. Right, so let's carry on. So where I'm at with this at the moment is uh, it's come on quite a lot since I last did it on here. Um, so this all looks the same, but um, I've I'm still working just just HTML and a bit of JS at the moment. Um, so I've implemented the essentially this bit um, uh, and uh, this bit. Um, hi there, phase on overload. Overload. That's a good name. Um, so yeah, so I've sort of added, added these bits in and they're just a HTML. So you see there, your question, and then asking a question of the day, blah, 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 and a button. And the way these actually work is I'm using a thing called um, Crisp, Crisp Track. Ah, cool. Um, so what, what it does is when I click on, I need some help. Just me saying test, 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 test to myself, and it pops up and crisp. I don't want it to be like constantly on. So, like, if I escape out of this now, then this shows up. Hi, yeah, you're all right. Um, um, and then, which is fine, um, whatever. But really, like, I don't ever want I, the, the work that went into that was me not wanting to load that until I need it. So, until you actually interact with this, it, it, it doesn't load any third party crap. Yeah, which is good. And then the question thing is, well, it's just like, um, blah, 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 blah. Then you send it. That pops up in the corner. Doesn't actually do it. Doesn't look to be doing anything. Um, there's a little like, I'll style up as well. There's a little alert roll there. And then um, if I go into here, it says new question. And then, that. and then for me, I'll get an email. Um, and uh, I can then just sort of clear them on. Then when I do the Q&A sessions, I can obviously take questions from people that want to ask them in the Zoom or whatever. But then I can also be like, right, I've got this list of questions from people that wanted to do it anonymously or whatever. Okay, and then what I've added is um, lectures. Um, so this is like slides are built in with Elementor. So if you've got like the intro one, um, it's really hard to see them because it's just all HTML, but it's the intro side one. So these, this, and then I can toggle between them like that. But the cool um, thing is, is I can do speaker notes as well. Um, and this stays in sync across tabs. So if I just create a new tab, um, I'll just sort of loosely do it like this. So keep keep an eye on this one. Um, ooh, let's just make it really small and narrow. You see there on slide one, and I'll turn this one back into slide one normal. And it should, when I move to slide two, it'll update the notes one. So I'll be I'll be driving this one. Um, and the idea is then that when I'm uh, the attendees can, they've got full access to all this content whenever they want, including my speaker notes as well. So for, for once I'm actually going to have to do decent speaker notes. Um, and then the other thing is that the, um, the, for me presenting it, I'm going to be doing it within this. So when I'm helping people, I've got my own version of the whole project as well, like the completed version. So it's all going to be working nicely. So that's that. Um, so we implemented that and then the other bits is just easy collections, standard, standard eleven to business um, pages and stuff. So that's cool. 
now I'm doing today something extra cool um, is this bit. So the, the workshop is that the attendees are going to learn how to essentially build a design system, but the CSS for a design system with um, Cube CSS, that's the whole point of the workshop. Now, a big part of that is going to be like a style guide and a component library. So I'm going to do the component library now. Um, I've already prototyped it with Liberty. So it's, it's really rough and ready. This is just a uh, old HTML. So what you've got here is an iframe and that's got the component in it. And then the, if you go in full screen, it'll open up in a preview. So if you ever use anything like Fractal or Storybook or anything like that, it's got a very similar thing. I could have just used Fractal or Storybook. But what I've wanted to do for this whole project is like, I want every attendee to get this pack, um, which has got this obviously this LMNT project built in and then they're gonna write all the code within it and they can see how Cube CSS works, not just in their project, but obviously in this whole this whole thing is Cube CSS as well. So it's like a big overarching learning thing. Um so yeah, so I'm just gonna plop this prototype, tidy up, stick it in here, and get it working. Um, so I've already set up the page for it. Oh, the so this is the prototype code. This is the real code. So in here it's just a um, we're just using a normal, just a normal HTML page really. And then what you can do with the lemon is you can stick some front matter on it, and it'll uh, it'll do the job for you as as every other page. And what I'm just going to do in here is um, I take a look at my Figma, see what I'm need a sidebar, and I need some content. So use the old every layout sidebar, um, and then we'll put the content. And then Okay, okay. And then what I'll be doing in here is I'm just gonna do it now, it's just do H2 components. And then inside of here I'll do for I am in collections components. And four. Oops. I get a list first. Mm, I should just make it an ordered list. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Um, and then inside of here, I'll do. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, let's do a, a ref. So let's just put it to the line. Um, cool. Now I'm probably going to have to use pagination to actually generate this properly. This is all this is doing is just dumping, looping, and dumping each one. But really, what I want to do is use pagination to do it. Now I'm already using that for the preview. So this is um, the preview is one what happens when you press full screen. You get like slash preview components test. Um, got some variants on there as well. But um, this is what I want to be doing really is paginating the collections, but also looping each collection on here. So I'm actually going to just nick this whole block here um there we go lovely now there's one problem this is going to cause is that the project um default I'm probably going to have to have like a landing page for the project because you've got, it could actually be the style guide, it could be the landing page because 
And when you use pagination, you're not you're going to get a URL for each one of these um, elements in there. So what we need to do is um, first get that working. So um, we'll say we'll just say component. Um, Pi library. Um, so what I'm doing here is 11t allows you to use data within your permalink generation. So I'm going to use Pi library item URL. Um, what we're we doing here? Preview. Preview components test. Yeah, that'll work. Um, okay, look, and then. Oh, that's my um, prototype. I was looking at that thinking, why the, why the hell have I got a doc type in there? Okay, and then, so this is going to stay the same. So fragment collections come up because we want every component to show on every single page. And then the, this is going to be the same. So is it pan library? Is that right? Pan library item URL index. So I'm going to use that same um, pattern. I am URL. Lovely. And then I am title. And then in there, that should work out fine. Um, I'm going to have to change that to be. Um, so we know we've already got item up there. Cool. So the item is going to be this essentially. So using that pagination, um, it, it loops through every single component and creates a page for each one. So we know we're on like the first one's going to be this test, test mate one. What I do is on the prototype home, so I'll essentially help us get there. I am. What did I do there then? Um, punt parts, I am fast look. Ah, yeah, God, man. Really went to town on this prototype. Didn't actually do anything. Let's just have a quick look at what we've got here. It's been a couple of months since I worked on this prototype, so. Ah, oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Right. Go back in the code. Part sign file so split. Which one's what is part sign? That's correct. So what this is doing is basically looking at um this file. So for every component you got test and then test.json. And then this is that first one, so it's our titles test mate, Lauren Mipsum, it's just a little summary or whatever. And then each variant you pass context down to the component itself. So very much like Fractal where you can assign context there, but then every variant, you can either inherit the initial context there or you can create variants to that there, add and remove there, change it. It's handy as hell when you're doing pattern libraries. Um, and that's what I'm sort of implemented here with 11C. Um, and then, yeah, the renders straight up, really. Essentially, grabs component um, with node, and then it sort of uses none jokes to then render that, just like Eleventy does when it renders the template, essentially. So I actually need to um, take these. Um, lots of lots of stuff. Right, so 
I'll do is I'll grab the um, components workshop. There we go. Oh, random. Where's that come from? See you later. SRC. Plot that in there. So that's the same ones. Uh, nick these helpers. I'll probably rename them eventually, but we'll see. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to grab the entire file. Um, just leave myself that. Helpers. I've already got some helpers in here. Um, what I'll do is I'll just merge these two together like that. And then I need to install Nunjuk. In fact, I've already got Nunjuks from Eleventy, so it's fine. Cool. And then what I'll do is back in the home from here. This is why prototyping is super useful. Um, because like you've I've done a prototype for each one of these little things, right? So I've done a prototype for like the slides and a prototype for the um pattern library thing, all these little bits. I did a prototype for the um the chat integration. This um you just you, you work out the validity of each little idea that you've got and then if you've and if it works, you've you've got like a low fidelity version of the code that you can just like plop straight into your project and then refactor it as necessary. Really, really handy. So then in here, what we'll do is we'll mm -hmm. project definitely I am. Okay. I like really doing this 11.2 where um, I use JavaScript data files to create sort of front end helpers and stuff and function like that. Um, it's really handy um, way of working with things. Okay, so we'll just leave the iframe. I need to do that as well. Mm -hmm. So you see the preview, um, it runs off the, so essentially the, the iframe just loads the preview itself um, inside of there. And the reason why I put it in an iframe, if you've not done anything with pipeline libraries before, is you, 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 don't, you, you, want, you don't want the outside pattern library to sort of interfere with the, um, the, actual components and stuff itself so it's almost like having little mini websites in there um so i need to do that as well um i'll change the url though that lovely okay probably gonna have like Builder is coming out of my eyeballs at the moment. Oh no, it seems to be working all right. Okay, so let's steal a preview as well. It's the whole page. Bosh. And I'm actually going to keep this, and I remember why I've done this now as well, because what we're doing with this is everything's going to be running on the same asset pipeline, right? So the SAS that comes from this site, and then the SAS that the actual attendees will be writing. We'll all run through the same process, but the their SAS, as, as in the SAS they're writing for the project, will get stuffed into here, and then the SAS for the site gets stuffed elsewhere. And you see here we're using that render helper to um, grab the item. Pretty sure now we've got computer data on 11T, I don't need to do this anymore. I have to pass the collection that I'm filling in. I think I can actually access that better but ain't had much time 
So Vim source, and then what there is, I'll just call that one component preview. Plot that in there. And again, we're using that same logic, so we create a permalink for it, component preview. And then hopefully, Ah, um, I haven't added the collection yet. Um, that would, oops. Ooh. Let's just open the Eleventy file here. Oof, doing some, some mad stuff here. Hmm. I'm using that now. Oh, I think I am actually in the helper. Yeah. I remember having some real problems with that. Um, so I'll, I'll nick that as well. Put it in this 11 file. And then this is my collection. Nice and straightforward. Um, NJK. Maybe we use HTML files for that. We'll see. Um, and then we'll just go, just put it at the top and try and keep semblance of. Oops. What the juice? There we go. Okay, doke. There we go. Now we're cooking, cooking with gas. Test, test primary. So that's how the variants are loading. So I just have a quick peek at that in the old uh, internet browser. There you go. So that's the component rendering. Happy days. Okay, so. Let's see, let's see, let's see. We need to get that working now. So that's now a cached version of the site, so I can deal with that another time. Where are we? So bum, bum, bum. components. I'll just do one of them. So we'll just do components and then test. And that was the view we were looking at initially. So something is not, not working there. Um, so we'll have a quick look. Ah, it's pattern library that was in. So is it actually rendering any of that then? Oh, it is, yeah. Ah, uh, pattern library components test, I'll say. Hopefully, so you can start seeing this slide. There you go, look, so it's rendering the component there. No, that's not quite working, but we'll get there. Howdy how, Ronash. Um, it's, it, it's so unbelievably powerful, is 11 to Like, you can do like really simple stuff with it really quick, but you can also do some pretty, uh, pretty bonkers stuff like this, you know, like building a, I mean, there's that um, duet design system, that's all running off 11 to. Uh, yeah, yes. Beautiful design system. All running off 11 to, the whole thing. Um, which is just great, you know? Just love to see it. You really don't need to use heavy duty frameworks to achieve these things when you've got something as powerful as 11 to available. So component and component, but, 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 ah, well, that's why it didn't work because we, um, the title lives in the dare object. Oh, you're from India. Cool. Very cool. Um, okay. That's not test, test primary. We've got an extra double, extra slash on there, so we can get rid of that. Lovely. 
test mate. Test mate. Now they shouldn't both have the same um, title as each other, I don't think. Who knows? Um, the problem with using like um, test. Oh, well, they're just two different variants. Oh, they were, yeah. It's only one component and a variant. Um, okay. So that's the next job, really. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to commit this. Base component library implementation. Yeah. Push it up. It's got that safety net. So for each um, I just have a little think for a second. When did I start programming? Good question. Well, I've been doing this. Uh, 2009, I started um, charging people money for work. Um, this, this sort of work anyway. So yeah, that long, how long that? 11 years, you know, been doing this. Not bad. Um, right, come on, let's have a little think. What are we doing? What are we doing wrong here? Let's just see what we're looking at. I should have probably um, reminded myself what I was doing. So I've got one test and test primary. Ah, right, it's okay. Gotcha. So, do some uh, some fancy stuff here, if I think, to do this. So these, that's our variant. And that's my, um, my thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no program really isn't really not cool at all. It's, uh, it's definitely overblown. Right, so let's see. So go back into the project view. Now what was that? Uh, help us get item data. I need this again. Um, 24. Um, right. Component uh, equals help us get item data component. And then that helper so it grabs the file slug split response equals out there. Uh huh. Variant equals out variance parts. I uh, see. So Insta. I don't use Instagram. Um, right. So, component there, help us get out there, component. So, the. Let's have a little think. So, back in that helper, I need to determine. Um, console log parts length. Two one two 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 one two, because then that's how I'm going to determine whether it's a variant or not. Um, parts I well, I'm already doing that down here. Parts length is greater than one, and then the I am there is 
uh, has own property variants. Response equals response, and then ah, uh, so each each one. So what I'm doing there is I've got that data set, and then I'm merging the two together using the spread operator, and then that that means that if response has got dot test in it, and then variant has got dot test in it, variance dot test will override responses dot test instead. So what I can actually do in here is I can spread an um, response to that, and I can then say response dot type equals variant like that, and then um, component by default. So now when I'm actually in the front end, um, I've got a component there, so I'm not, I want to be using that instead. So what I'll do in here is I'll just jump in here and I'll say component uh, type component variant. See you later. Um, Right, I wonder what time it is in, in India then. Um, actually, it's probably quite late. Okay, so we've got that. A bit lost now, right? So what I need to do is. So that's going to give me every single one, including the variance. Now I only want top level ones, so I can then say if component there, uh, oops, type equals component, then and if right, so that's fine. So now we should only have um, one item in our menu. Perfect. Back in the helpers. Const variant. So if variant. Okay. Doom, 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 item there. Now the reason it's got, um, we're able to access it with there, just an FYI is because we've got test and then test.json and um, the, the, um, the, the way that the 11 data system works is it'll automatically assign that data to the um, that component or that collection item. So this this imagine this is just from uh, in the component. It, it, it works in exactly the same way. Um, I think it's just easy to in this instance to manage this in a JSON file. So what we need to get what I'm going to try and do now then is extract the variance so i can generate because what i'm trying to do is generate this so you got the, the button which is the the main component then you got go small large so all the variants that go with it or card and then small wide whatever um a bit of a brain teaser to be honest all right, let's see. So, type. Okay, okay. I don't think this is going to be the right way to do it. I think I need to um, do 
something smarter in the helpers file. All right, so response type is component. That's very I'm just going to see what um, variant contains at this point. Title, hello pal. Cool, and that's so that's picking this item out. Variants, variants primary. This primary. All right, I think we've got it. Um, so. I'm just going to make this a little bit easier for myself to see now. Test variant one. So it's pulling the wrong bloody thing out anyway, so that's another thing to fix. Oh no, it's not. It's pulling the right thing out. Test. There we go. Test. Now we're all level. So we've got that top level component. So then now what I can do is in the helpers is it's an array like that one. and we've got there so then because I want to return this each time anyway oh no that's not going to work is it that is not going to work mm, try to think now I'm going to make this work. Right. We will get there. Just primary test, 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 test. test. Oh, I think I know how to do it. Um, just do a new, a new one. Get variants. Um, let's have a little think how we're going to do it. Parts any instead of parts length greater than equal one. Doesn't dot any, just return. Um, I mean some or dot dot any I don't think I've heard of that before. All right anyway, let's not um get derailed too much. Uh so get variants. So we do slug. And then the collection for that. And then you do turn collection filter hex dot file slug includes. Uh, Includes just an array, isn't it? Ugh. If you have three schools, does JS support any? I don't think it does. Um, are you, is dot with the uppercase A? Is that a like a C sharp thing or something? Um, ah, oh yeah, cool. So includes does does exist? I thought it was just an array prototype method, but clearly not. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say file slug includes and then do back tick in there. Um, some of the collections is the flat 
a flattened, flattened version regardless of the document structure. Um, and then what I'll say is slug. And then I put a dash like that because it's if it's a variant of the slug, it's going to be test dash variant. So it's got that component slug, and then it's got a dash in it. Then we're all good in the hood. It's not bulletproof by any stretch, but it's um, it's better than nothing in it. Um, send so set variants. It's not a very uh, efficient way of doing things, but whatevs. Um, Ooh. Variance. And then uh, might as well do it in here at least. Sort of save some of the, uh, the strain, and then what we can then do is and say if variance nested list. like something went wrong there. Let's have a look. Hmm. So sort of pass the right thing through. Bosh. Uh, it's not quite right there. Oh no, it's done it. Just not got the right title. Variant data title. Uh, weird, 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 weird. Why is it not? Uh, did I even give it a proper title? Test.json. Yeah, test variant one. I wonder why that didn't um, override the, the title. Hell of a head scratcher today, eh? Um, Let's just log response. <laughs> ah, right. Title. Yeah, but it should response dot title. Oof, I'm lost in a sea of tabs. Yeah, test, test, test. Test, 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 test. Um, where, oops. Variant title. Test, test. So why is variant title not taken? Precedent at this point. Oh, no, it's doing it. Um, he says, it's just oh, mm, let's just clean up a bit. Reserve. Uh, Test variant one. 
I just wonder why that's not coming through onto here. Hmm. Oh well. Get in there. Get in there. Um, unless it was. Ah, oh, wait a minute. I think I know what the problem is. Um, I think it's just variant tile, not variant data tile. If not, I give up. Give up for the day. Nope, don't work. Fix that another time. Um, my brain has just stopped now completely. Not too bad though. Um, looking pretty, pretty cool. That's working. Nice. Pretty cool. I'll tell you what we'll do just before we um, what we do before we go is we will go back on that preview thing, grab the render, yank that, and then back on the project, and then inside of here, so you've got the iframe there, and then you've got full screen, and then what you want to do then is to um, pre code. And then, oops, pre, oh, God, lost it now, completely lost it. Hmm, so we did something. Oh, I need to take the safe off it. So it's escaped. Lovely. And then that's the, the HTML that goes with it. So whenever I go on test.njk, then you know, I say, look, hi pals, this is a cool component. And then the, uh, ooh, the attendees are gonna have some fun with this. Tab into style there. Pretty good though, eh? Oh, I know what the problem is with that. Um, I need to do it. Um, flat. It's like a text area where it'll just render the uh, white space as well. No, oh, maybe not. Who knows? Anyway, pretty good. Pretty happy with that. I think tomorrow I'll pick up. It depends. Um, let's have a quick look. Oh, yeah. Bang on stream time. Mm. <laughs> If I do one tomorrow, it'll be like an hour earlier probably than what it is now. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. All right, sweet, nice one. Thanks for stopping by, everyone. See ya.